Recently, Comedy Hype got the opportunity to interview Karen M. White, who was introduced to audiences as Charmaine from The Cosby Show. Then later, Nicolette from Malcolm and Eddie. White can now be heard in the revival series, The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, now streaming on Disney Plus. And in her new interview, she explained her disappearance from Hollywood. According to White, roles had slowed down, and at one point, she battled with insecurities after her character, Nicolette from Malcolm and Eddie, was called ugly. Today, we have our company hype analyst, Vanessa Fraction and Pierre, along with special guest, Desi Alexander, calling to the show to give the reactions. But first, let's take a look at this exclusive clip. And maybe why do you think people saw you less? Um, yes, it got, it got to a low after Malcolm and Eddie. Um, I did do The Proud Family shortly after that, and that was voiceover. Um, but then the roles started, you know, less and less. There wasn't another series regular for a while after that. Um, but, you know, that's part of the journey. But I think, too, for me personally, I took a lot of hits on Malcolm and Eddie uh, because my character was called ugly a lot. And, and it pushed my buttons, my personal buttons. You know, that little girl with the 4C hair, who was it, you know? I go to school one way by the end of the day, you know? Um, so it hit those buttons that I thought I had resolved. And, and so you show up in your next audition with all that stuff. You show up a little more desperate. You show up, am I cute enough? Am, is my hair straight enough? Do I got too much weight? You know, all of those things. And you don't, as much as you're trying to, you know, not come in the room with that, you do. And so I had to work through all of that. And I think the more, um, the more I try to repress it, of course, the more, you know, it shows. I want to dive straight into reactions. Pierre, I want to come to you first. After seeing that, what are your thoughts? Uh, being, being teased and calling her ugly on a national platform is not easy at all. And I understand how she says, how she feels. Um, yeah, this business can be very harsh. It's a very harsh business. Um, you know, you put yourself out there to be judged. You know, that's what it is. And unfortunately, everybody doesn't think you're the perfect person. And only show business is the kind of place you could be, you know, judgmental and not hire some look. You can't do that at at t or whatever, other store. If you're too tall or too dark skinned to go along with somebody, they don't sometimes put you on next to somebody. You're too tall, you're too short, you're too skinny for that person. You can't do that in any other um, thing. But we do put ourselves out there to be, you know, to be, to, to, to subject ourselves to that. No different than online now, how people talk bad about me in the, in the inbox, you know, in the comments. I got to have thick skin to, to deal with that. And I do. So, you know, it is what it is. You put yourself out there, you're going to, you know, you're going to get that. And um, unfortunately, she got it in a bad way. And I really empathize and sympathize for the young lady. Absolutely. Vanessa, I see you shaking your so want I want to get your thoughts. What are your reactions after seeing that clip? I was a little emotional. Um, I actually, uh, same as Pierre, empathize and sympathize with her um, in this business of um, entertainment in general. Like it's a whoa, it's a lot of high highs at times and very low lows. And yeah. um, it takes a toll on you mentally, emotionally, even physically. And so um, I think we, you know, can relate to that. And it's a lot of personal care that you have to um, implement um, if you can recognize that's what's going on with you at the time, you know what I mean? Cause you got to keep going. And, and then sometimes if you in between gigs, well, how am I paying for this personal care? So um, it's a lot, you know, to deal with. And so I, I, I definitely felt for her. I'm a fan of hers. I remember her from lean on me and every other thing that you had said. And I just love her character. I love her. Um, <clears throat> I love all her characters. Right. Desi, um, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us today. We're, we're very glad to have you. Um, now, after seeing that clip, I want to I want to get your thoughts as well. When you first saw that today, what's your what's your initial reaction? It, it of course hits you right in the chest because you feel like this is somebody you watch grow as you grew up. You watch them grow up too, and we only see these people in these roles. And it really when you when you find out these things happen behind the scenes and everything, it kind of mm -hmm. hurts you from a standpoint of taking taking away mm -hmm. the love that you have for your craft when you keep having to go through stuff like that. It makes you not even want to do it. And then like we just said before the show even started, once you disappear, people always think something wrong or you're falling off when it's really like you're just trying to get back to yourself and you're just trying to figure your life out for real. So. Absolutely. Now, Vanessa, I want to ask, have you ever heard anything, you know, like this where some actors or actresses get so attached to their roles that it has this big of an effect on them? 
Definitely. Um, there's a lot of characters that have these um, really pronounced roles, roles that we really remember them by. And, uh, you know, we call them that on the streets. And sometimes it's hard, you know, for you to you feel a little bit typecast or what have you. For her speaking on being called ugly, though, that's a little bit different, a different thing to have to deal with. You know what I mean? And to not personalize it is sometimes difficult because for me, I think she's a beautiful woman. So I thought that the character that she was playing was an annoying character. And so your personality is ugly and get away from me, you know, that kind of thing. But I never considered how much one could internalize that when even in the description, it might be uh, a not traditionally attractive woman or whatever word they right. used to, to, to fit that description. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Right, and, and looking at her then and now, she still looks great. But Pierre, I, I want to get your thoughts on that. Have, have you heard of anything like this in Hollywood where, you know, actors and actresses are so attached to their roles that it has this big of an effect? Um, yeah, I have. When that shine goes away and you got to face your life the way, you know, your normal life is, it's, it's, it's detrimental and it's hard because a lot of times people want you to stay exactly the same way you look. If you look different, even 20 years later, they can, you know, have things that changed on their body and their face, but they expect you to look like you know, like mm. you looked 20 years ago on television. That's a very heavy thing. That's why a lot of people get surgeries in Hollywood and try to keep looking young, look younger because it's always about the young look and the thin look. So I see a lot of pressures on that. You know, it's a beautiful thing and people accept you. People are very, very different when you're online or on the other side of the television watching someone, the pressures you put on people on show business. But again, we sign up for it, but sometimes we don't know how difficult it is that we signed mm -hmm. up for, you know, the job. So Desi, let me, I want to bring this question to you. Do you think Hollywood should take more responsibility in providing care for actors and actresses, whether it's with their mental health or self-esteem, but just having that, that care provided for them? Of course. I mean, I think we're in a good time now because of mental health is like the thing to take care of and the thing to is, is being highlighted now and it wasn't like that back in the day. But I feel it is their sole responsibility, just like, like how they do athletes, how they have mm -hmm. trainers and personal, you know, things for them, social actors. But of course, they don't, they don't really care. They just, they just, <laughs> what, what money can you bring us? And when we're done with you, that's it. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, we got to take care of ourselves. And I appreciate this platform, Comedy Hype, for even bringing this kind of conversation up because this may start that conversation for them to do stuff like that to keep people going. But it's just, it's not even really up to them because I don't really, I wouldn't really depend on them to do that. It's just really up to us and the people you surround yourself with to help you with that. Yeah, no, I think you bring up a great point there. Uh, Vanessa, I, I want to allow you to chime in on that as well. What do you think? Do you think Hollywood should, you know, take more responsibility in providing that type of care for actors and actresses? I think since we're bringing it up, why not? You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, the higher you go up, those checks get really, really big. So uh, to keep your artists and to keep the actors and actresses, you know what I'm saying? To keep us in a good space and ready to work, you know what I'm saying? To make more money for ourselves and for the companies and such. I think that it would be a very good thing. As Desi was saying, you know, they provide certain things for athletes and, and things like that. Even when right. like in a school system, if you go through a certain trauma, they'll provide counselors and things like mm -hmm. that for you. And even though we do understand that we have a personal responsibility to our mental health, yeah. it's still, as we had spoke before, sometimes you're in between gigs sometimes it's all kinds of things that are going on it and right. again i think it's right. enough money to go around to put some of that toward and making sure that uh people are ready to work and feeling good absolutely now pierre i want you to chime in on that as well what, what are your thoughts okay. no I, I totally agree remember show business builds you up and sometimes they build you up falsely make you feel like you're a tougher guy than you are arnold schwarzenegger mm -hmm. um um salone makes you feel like you're a bigger person it's their job to build you up, to beat everybody's butt, and you can whoop everybody, shoot a gun and all that, make you such a big star. Once you don't bring value to them no more, they get rid of you. Well, you have built that image up. You mentally start believing it sometimes. People think you're that person. Now you got to walk out in these streets and be a normal person again, and that can mess with your psyche. And if they yeah. kept you out so much to make so much money off you and build you up like that, they, they should have some responsibility to help take care of you and have a place to go to and, you know, and get your mind right because they took you from nobody and built you up to some something that you really ain't, and then say yeah. goodbye to you and kick you back to the curb, you're a human being. So I still feel like they have a responsibility and they have enough financial money they make off of you yeah, to have a make situation you, yeah. where you can go see mental health and some stuff. They used you, they shouldn't abuse you. Absolutely, and I think sometimes some of these roles can even be, you know, really dark in the same way, you, like you said, Pierre, they prepare you for fighting roles and they have all this training. So if you know I have a, a role that's gonna, you know, require certain things, it only makes sense to add it. So. As always, I appreciate y'all for chiming in. But before we head out, I do want to know what y'all have coming up. So I'll start with our very special guest, Mr. Desi Alexander. What do you have coming up this week? 
Oh mm-hmm. man, I have a sketch comedy show called Tonight Special Guest. It should be on Amazon soon. We filming our last two episodes uh, tomorrow. I'm excited about that. And I got uh, Easter Comedy Classic in uh, April 17th. I'll be in Miami in uh, March. So yeah. Awesome. Vanessa, I'll come to you. What do you have coming up? As always, um, check me out online at Vanessa Fraction on all your social media. Go to my website. Um, it's always something popping on there as well at VanessaFraction.com. Um, you can catch me as a co-host on the Nappy Boy Radio podcast with T-Pain. And this Saturday, Milwaukee, 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 Milwaukee. I'll be at Bonkers, um, which is in the pots of, I always say this casino wrong, but if you live in Milwaukee, you know where the hell it is. Come see me for two <laughs> shows, seven and nine o'clock. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Pierre, what do you have coming up? Um, give me first a shout out for those who watch my podcast, Pierre's Panic Room on YouTube. All the fans out there, thank you so much. The numbers are rising. You guys are liking it. You're loving it. You just saw the Godfrey, uh, Godfrey one. Thank you so much for supporting Pierre's Panic Room on YouTube. Go to Comic Pierre. You can see it on YouTube. Um, I will be in Youngstown, Ohio and Cleveland March 11th through the 13th. So if you're in Youngstown, Ohio or Cleveland, Ohio, March 11th through 13th at a couple spots. So check me out, man. Thank you all so much again for supporting. And that's what we're doing this weekend. Well, coming up. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate y'all calling for chiming in. And again, thank you so much, Desi, for joining us today. You heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts about Karen M. White's thoughts on her disappearance? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in them comments. Put it in the comments. Down Down below. Hey, for that aftercare. Aftercare. Did you enjoy today's show? You can stop by ComedyHype.com backslash shop to pick up your Comedy Hype News show mug today. And don't forget to always protect black culture.